Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. So today I have gathered up all the books that I really want to read in 2017. Sort of like a yearly TBR. I don't really make TBR videos. That's mainly because I don't like to be narrowed down to a certain amount of books each month and in all honesty I never stick to it. So this is sort of my take on a TBR. They're mostly books that I really wanted to get to in 2016 but just never got around to. There is a lot of books here so I'm going to go through them quite quickly. I'm not going to give you a massive description and also some of them I don't know too much about. They just sound really intriguing. So the first book is actually a short story collection, no surprise there, and it is Treats by Laura Williams. I don't know why I haven't read this yet, I picked this up at the Edinburgh Book Festival last summer and I still haven't got around to reading it. It's a short story collection all about growing up and sex and being a woman and relationships and just my sort of thing. There's no excuse for the fact that I haven't read this yet so I need to get to this really soon. Next is something that I was bought for my birthday and that is The Sweetness at the Bottom of the Pie by Alan Bradley. This is about an 11 year old girl called Flavia who is a mystery solver and is also a poisoner and this is a huge series of books. I think there must be about 30 and I always see them in the shops and I was really intrigued and I've heard really good things about this. I love crime books especially with young protagonists um, so I'm really excited to get to this soon. The next one is one that I picked up when I went to Bath and that is The Facades, a novel by Eric Lundgren. I think is how he pronounced his surname. I don't know much about this book. I looked on Goodreads and there are barely any reviews and they're quite mixed so I'm really intrigued. The back just says The Facades is one of the most remarkable and talked about debut novels in recent memory. Set in the once great midwestern city of Trude, a treacherous maze of convoluted shopping malls, barricaded libraries and elitist assisted living homes, The Facades follows a disconsolate legal clerk named Sven Norberg who sets out to investigate his wife's disappearance. So that's all you get. I'm really intrigued and I really want to get to this soon. Also the cover is absolutely beautiful. So the next one is The Last Animal by Abby G. Knight which is a short story collection. I think I saw this on Mercedes channel a couple of years ago and only recently got round to buying it. Um, I saw it I think before I even started making videos. So all the blurb says is this short story collection is about people who use the interface between the human and the natural world to contend with their challenges in love, loss and family life as it underscores the connection among all living things. Sounds really interesting and something a bit different for me. I don't don't tend to read short story collections about animals and that sort of thing so I'm really intrigued by this and again absolutely beautiful cover. You know when you see a book on the shelf and you know you're gonna love it and you buy it but then you never read it because you don't want to be spoiled in case you don't like it but if you do like it you don't want it to be over and you never get to experience it the first time again that probably makes no sense but this is how I feel about this book. This is The Box Man by Kobo Abe I think is how I pronounce that which is about a man who lives his life with a cardboard box on his head because he's done with people and he's done with society. The opening chapter is instructions on how to make your own cardboard box and then the rest of it is sort of a diary and accounts of his everyday life living with a cardboard box on his head. I need to read this. Why haven't I read this? I don't know. I just need to get over myself and read it. Yeah. It sounds so good. This is one that I've had in my collection for about three years, I think, ever since Carrie Hope Fletcher mentioned it on one of her videos, and it is Kimberly's Capital Punishment by Richard Millwood. This is about a relationship, and Kimberly is done with a relationship. She doesn't want to be with her partner anymore. So she tries to make herself really horrible and tries to make him break up with her, but instead of doing that, he commits suicide, and she has to deal with that, and I believe the opening to this book is the aftermath of that. And it just sounds really dark and mysterious and so intriguing and a really interesting concept. So I really want to read this soon. Again, I don't know why I haven't. I have so many fantastic books like this in my collection that I just haven't read. But yeah, this is definitely one that I need to get to soon. The next one is quite a recent pickup for me, but definitely something that I need to get to this year. And it is The Mothers by Britt Bennett. I think I picked this up when I was with Angelica in Birmingham a few months ago, not that long ago. And it was on offer for about £3 in foils. And it's just such a gorgeous cover that I couldn't put it down. I don't know too much about this but I know that it's done extremely well with reviews. I think it's won a couple of awards or been nominated for things. This is mainly a book set in contemporary America about a group of black friends. Um, I don't read enough about other cultures in all honesty, I'll call myself out now and I really hope this will get me into that because it's something really important that I should be doing and I don't, I really need to expand diversely. That's one of my goals for this year is to read a little bit more diversely. Hopefully this will help me with that. The next one is one that Mercedes over at Mercer's Bookish Musings sent me a few months ago and that is The Natural Way of Things by Charlotte Wood. She didn't particularly like this and I was really intrigued by it so she sent it my way. The blurb of this is really interesting so I'll very quickly read it to you. Two women awaken from a drug sleep to find themselves imprisoned in a broken down property in the middle of a desert. Strangers to each other they have no idea where they are or how they came to be there with eight other girls forced to wear strange uniforms, their heads shaved, guided by two inept yet vicious armed jailers and a nurse. 
sounds really interesting it's a brilliant concept for a book but she wasn't too happy with the way it played out and I am a bit concerned about that I think that's always a concern with such an interesting concept so after reading Kate Tempest's Hold Your Own I've been really desperately wanting to read more of Kate Tempest's work and Pam McMillan the lovely Jean very kindly sent me two more so I have her new collection here Let Them Eat Chaos and then Brand New Ancients as well which sound fantastic and I can't wait to read them because her poetry is so good and I'm so happy I finally rediscovered a love for poetry so I'll be reading these very soon I could get these read on a train journey and I always love reading poetry on a train um, for some reason I find it really interesting so can't wait to read those as well. The next one is also from Picador at Pam Macmillan and that is The Fat Artist by Benjamin Hale which is another short story collection. This came out on the 8th of September, you can see the final cover there so you can see how far behind I am with reading and reviewing books. All the back says is Benjamin Hale's first short story collection embraces the grotesque side of human nature and the unnerving intersections between life and death, art and ridicule, consumption and creation. I have actually read the first short story in here, I can't remember how long ago it is and I don't remember too much about it but I really remember enjoying it at the time. I love books about the grotesque side of humanity, always really intrigues me so hopefully I'll get to this soon as well. Another book which I requested and was sent from Penguin is The Power by Naomi Alderman. I'm really intrigued to read this. This is to do with witchcraft and powers and what about if the power was in women's hands. What a fantastic concept. Again, I don't know too much about this book but I really want to get to it soon. Next book is another one that I requested from Blue Rider Press and this is Little Nothing, a novel by Marissa Silva. Again, I've heard absolutely incredible things about this book. I don't know too too much about this book but I do know it's about a little girl called Pavla who is born into a gypsy family and I believe she's born a dwarf so they invest in um, a witch doctor or some gypsies to try and make her no longer a dwarf which is problematic in its own sense and I don't read a lot of books like this but it really caught my eye. For a couple of reasons I've decided not to do an anticipated release of 2017 but one of the books that I'm really excited for and that comes out in February is Heather O'Neill's The Lonely Hearts Hotel and the back says this story begins in the most unfashionable of gutters. It's a love story but not one you'd expect. It is a fairy tale with a wicked heart. So it says the book is set in the underbelly of the Roaring Twenties about childhood damage and the redemptive power of art and love really excited this. So thank you so much for sending this to me and I can't wait to read it soon. The next book is something I'm really excited for and I've actually already started reading. I believe it comes out end of January or February but don't quote me on that and it's very kindly sent to me from Fig Tree at Penguin after I requested it and that is Claire Fuller's Swimming Lessons. Claire most famously wrote our Endless Numbered Days which I've heard absolutely fantastic things about. It's definitely my sort of book but I just never got around to reading it. I don't own it in my collection so I need to go and pick that up really soon. But this just sounds so interesting. I shall read you the blurb. Ingrid writes letters to her husband Gil about their life together. But instead of giving them to him, she hides them in the thousands of books Gil has collected. When Ingrid has written her final letter, she disappears from a Dorset beach. Twelve years later, her adult daughter Flora comes home to look after her injured father. Secretly, Flora has never believed that her mother is dead and she starts asking questions without realising that the answers she's looking for are hidden in the books that surround her. I've read uh, the first ten or so pages and it's just magical and I'm so excited for this and yeah I can't wait to finish it. The last book is something that I'm really excited for. It doesn't have a dust jacket on at the moment because I'm reading it and when I'm reading them properly I always take the dust jackets off but this is English Animals by Laura Kay which is published by Little Brown. This book is about a young Slovakian girl called Mirka who moves into a place called Fairmount Hall which has the residence of Sophie and Richard and they are a married couple and she's there to help them around the house and with Richard's new money making scheme which is taxidermy. There may be some relationship between Mika and Sophie but I don't want to spoil too much for you now. I have a very exciting video coming up on this channel on the 20th of January so if you're interested in hearing a little bit more about English animals and interested in a giveaway then please pop back here because there'll be a really cool video that I'm so excited for and so happy to be asked to do it so yeah 20th of January on this channel. I think that is everything I have to show you. Sorry that was a little bit of a whistle stop tour but I think I have shown most of those books in videos beforehand and given a little bit more of a description but as soon as I've read them I'll give you all a proper review. Thank you so so much for watching and I shall see you in my next video so make sure you pop back here on the 20th of January. Bye!